So you, you lived in a nice place. Beautiful place. Beautiful and place. landlord lost it? He Yeah, he was a, um, a banking investor and he actually went to Berkeley. He had a certificate um, from Berkeley. And I guess, I don't know, something went wrong upstairs and um, he was sentenced to do 45 days mandatory 45 days in Western State Mental Institution and he is not yet gone and because um, I guess they're waiting for a bed or I'm, I don't know what the yeah. excuse is but um, yeah and the police you know they're aware of his problems but I had to leave I had to leave because it was it was it got really bad they got right because I'm a domestic violence survivor on top of all of this <laughs> and so I I left I had to leave, you know, so. But you said adds to the trauma. Yeah. Oh, massively. So you've been homeless ever since? Yep. How August, long ago was that? August of last year. So about a year. Yeah, yeah. And then the virus didn't help at all because my sister, uh, who's also homeless um, and lives next door to me, um, she has cancer. And so she can't, you know, I can't, you know, I used to work <laughs> a lot. So, and to expose her to something like that um, would be deadly, so, yeah. Now, um, you used to work, well, what did you do? Um, I had an auto detailing business, mobile auto detailing business. I was the first woman in the state of Washington to have a, a mobile auto detailing business. Oh. And I also worked at um, uh, Shell Jackson's. I worked there as a ca cashier, which I absolutely loved. Well, you, we pulled up and you're working on a car. Uh, yeah, well, that's my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, what, I, I mean, I know the lack of showers and everything else, but yeah, nobody's hiring homeless people. I mean, what's... It's hard to hire a homeless person. When I was working at Jackson's, they were aware of my situation and they were accommodating, very accommodating about that. And when I did my mobile detailing, um, you know, I was able to schedule my own, you know, my own schedule, so. But it's right. still difficult. It's so difficult. In fact, I'm um, out here since I've been out here, like, off and on for the past four years, well, knowing this area, um, we kind of go shower at a local hotel. And uh, that can be very risky sometimes, you know, like um, very risky. But I've known it, I've known it since, about it since I've been out here. But there's no shower program at all. <laughs> so you, you guys go to like a low end hotel then? Yeah, we go and they Trying have to be like drug yeah. dealers, gang bangers. Uh, no, the owner of the property walks in while you're showering. Oh my gosh. And tries to yeah, that just recently happened to me for the first time. Wow. Uh, walks. <laughs> How do you sleep with the train? You get at night, it's not like this. At night. So, it's yeah, not at night. Um, you just get used to it. But, uh, which I know. <laughs> I went from this, I went from an ocean to this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, he walked in. He walked in on when I was out. And, uh, even though I wasn't supposed to be there, um, and yeah, it was not good. So, it was not good. so and it's yeah, it's, you have to be aware of your surroundings out here. Uh, immensely, it's, there's a lot of girls out here that I watch after, um, I take care of because they're strung out and not capable of defending themselves. They're vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Right. And there's a lot of predators out here. Right. So. It's predators, probably house predators and homeless predators. I, I tell everybody, I tell all the girls that are out here, yeah. everyone's a predator. When yeah. I would, it's actually smart. Mm -hmm. um, when I was homeless, I was staying in a weekly rate hotel that they would ship us, drive us to another part. I know you lived in Hollywood, they would, or, or LA, they would drive us to Hollywood mm -hmm. and they would have us work at one of their you know, horrible hotels, and they wouldn't even buy toilet paper, they, you know, for people, they would say, you know, let them use their drug money for toilet paper, and they would, just horrible slumlords, yeah. and if you said anything or did anything, they rolled you up, 
And that's what happened to me. And then they just take you back to the, the SRO weekly rate hotel and kick you out. Wow. You know, and that's how I, one of the ways I officially they became. Don't, they, yeah, out here they don't have that problem. <laughs> um, out here they, the streets, they have their own. Yeah. They have their own laws and they have their own ways of um, fixing and dealing yeah. with things. They don't, there's a lot, we don't, nobody out here calls the police. Nobody. <laughs> so, they, we don't. Well, do you, are, does this area get swept at all? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, I personally have been swept three times. Oh, my God. Um, it's very, uh, because I'm a single female. Um, and the groups that I'm, I, you know, I, I'm with my friends that I've known for a long time. Uh, I'm safe, but they like breaking us up, which, you know, in some cases, yeah, it's, it's fine. But um, for so like the police sister, break you up or the sweeps? Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's it's very. Uh, I, I understand it to a certain extent. I really do, because uh, a lot of people out here have mental issues and. Uh, they, you know, defy rules or whatever, but um, they're very aggressive and, um, you Well, know. there's people in housing that are defy rules and are very yeah. aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. deserves a home. Everybody does. Absolutely. Everybody deserves a home. And um, I think nope. they should pick and choose, really, um, who they should sweep. And because uh, the, there was a group out here called We Heart Seattle, uh -huh. um, and they were very, at the, the beginning, I straight up told them just be honest you know and they weren't they were not honest and that's what they wanted to break up our encampment and it yeah, was you do have some weird groups up here in seattle yeah they no do, they're, they're really are, weird groups. Oh, yes. so how, how do you survive out here um uh i go out late at night i go out late at night and um i it's it's called dump well it's not dumpster diving i call it pillaging <laughs> but um i go to clean areas and recycle yeah I recycle like yeah. a lot and I give out a lot and I take care of a lot of the people out here but I take care of them and they take care of me you know we help right. each other well you're lot. here with your sister and your yeah. sister has cancer and you're yeah. Every next one. yeah um uh, is anybody helping you get out of homelessness um not really not not really I mean no I mean if if I was given a phone number if somebody comes up to me and gives me a card and says call this phone number they'll put you in a like a hotel or because i won't stay in a shelter because i have a cat and i've given up and i've lost a lot of stuff and in i'm not shelters. giving up my so cat. you've tried you've i won't tri stay in a shelter yeah. absolutely not most no. people won't no, no i lived in a shelter a for pet. far too long <laughs> Yeah, I have a cat. Horrible places. He's amazing. He's he's everything to me. He's he keeps me alive. He yeah. keeps me alive, and I'm yeah. not giving him up. So. so, but if somebody came by with a phone number and said, "Hey, here's a hotel path to housing," you'd do yeah, it. Yeah, here you go, and um, you know, get yourself on your feet. You know, I mean, because I can do that. Yeah, right. I can get my. I'm one of the very. F there's you know quite a few of us, but one of the rare that could actually here you go. You, if just, you just need a little help to yeah. get your life back. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's that it's that first the, barrier that's the yeah. hardest. Yeah, I mean, I could find a, a place to live. I know I would have to live in a roommate situation because I wouldn't be able to afford very much, if at all. But um, it's you know the rent out here is insane. But I love Washington. I don't want to move from Washington, but I grew up here. You know, I love the mountains and I love the ocean. And, yeah. I love it's going in adventures and yeah. stuff and not get bit by poisonous yeah. <laughs> animals. <laughs> if you had three wishes, what would they be? Uh, get a home, uh, see my kids, um, or sit down and eat dinner with my kids, um, which they're grown men. Um, and I don't know, I just want to relax <laughs> for the rest of my life. Just want to be able to relax. Yeah. So. My That's, family is very important to me. Well, people don't understand. They think homelessness is lazy, but you no. don't get days off. You're, oh, no. You've got to oh, always no. worry about security. The, it, this is... Wherever you, yeah. So no. I, I feel you when you say, I want to relax. So listen, this is work. This is a deal. We pay for our bills every day. Like when we need gas, we need heat. We pay for them every day. We don't get bills in the mail. You know, we have to pay for them. We have to stay warm. So we do what we have to do, but... You know, I was telling my friend, I'm like, you know, paying bills now is would be so awkward because right now I, I pay my bills every day. 
you know, and I, because I have to, like, we eat every day, so we have to figure right. it out, you know. We don't You don't have refrigeration? No, I do, I do. Okay. I have uh, electricity and stuff with a generator that okay. we need gas for, which right, is right, insanely right. expensive. Right, <laughs> You know. That's what um, I meant. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of the churches and, uh, a lot of the churches, even though out here, um, I haven't gone to get any, but they give out, like, uh, not gas vouchers, but uh, Safeway gift cards for food and whatnot, yeah. and you can get gas with that. So, you know, there are places that donate, that yeah. gets donations yeah. that help. They help yeah. a lot. Really, they do. So, Just no housing. Lots of food, no, no housing. housing. Yeah. No housing. No, I mean, I have a, I wear designer clothes. I'm not kidding. I wear, de I have designer clothes on right now because I got them out of the dumpster, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of the, uh, but no housing, yeah. no housing, zero housing. Yeah. And when um, this, this third, this is actually a very notorious street to be homeless on. Um, and I helped a lot of the people move from the last time it was swept and the mayor was out here and he did not come up to me or anybody that I saw uh, and offered housing. I, and and whatnot you know okay. I mean they've got to understand that a lot of these people they lose a lot of things in their life yeah. and to have to lose a lot more just to sweeps go to a shelter is not sweeps yeah the sweeps are, are pretty horrible. yeah and, and you, you just it, without housing you're stuck in the shelter right and oh I'm yeah yeah, yeah. So. A shelter I would see and I've actually thought about it you know maybe because I know if I go to a shelter maybe they will help I'm not going to a shelter. I I'm yeah. not because like I said I have a cat I have a sister yeah. And um, yeah, you're taking it's, care of your sister. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I and I really, I work hard. You can ask anybody out here who knows yeah, me, which we everybody does. We pulled up, you're working. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I work hard. You know, there's a lot. A lot of people Just actually need a break. do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I would love a break. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for talking it. to me. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs>